Hmm, what do I want for Christmas? What else? Mm. Hmm, how about... Sweet Potato Sensations is Sweet Potato Lovers Heaven on Earth. Sweet Potato Sensations was incorporated in December of 1987 and is located at 17337 Lasser Road. The bakery also has been featured in various national and local publications. In the latest issue of Essence Magazine, there is a story explaining the decline in business at Black-owned salons due to more women trading in monthly relaxers for their natural tresses and opting for wigs. Displaced Black stylists are seeking work at white or multicultural salons, and women are finding that white stylists can also create sleek blowouts. Would you go to a white hair stylist? Here's our thoughts. So on the topic is um, you're, you could do styles less expensive at home and learn how to work your own hair than going to spend 60 bucks for just a simple twist out that's going to take you two hours at home to do for free. Um, I'm all about saving money. Um, you'll get to know that by watching me on this video. I'm going to save, 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 and I'm going to teach you how to save too. That's my thoughts. Right? I also agree with Markeisha. Um, I haven't been to a stylist since I did my big shop, and that was only because I'm scaling the scissors. So, and you guys, you guys know a lot of people do their big shops at home. They don't go to salons. So, I also agree um, with the article. I think that you know a lot of natural or a lot of women who go natural, they also stop going to their stylist. And one of the reasons that I find when I read blogs and forums because their stylist is trying to get them to get the cream crack again. So it's kind of like, why would you go to a stylist, even if you've been going to that stylist for a long time, if they're going to try to get you to do something you don't want to do with your hair, or you don't trust them with your hair now because it's natural. So my thoughts on going to a white stylist, I would go to a white stylist if I needed to go to a salon. Again, I don't need to because I do my own hair. But you guys know, the one who did my big shop, she was a white person. And I, she loved my results. It didn't matter that she was white. And yes, I'm doing the neck roll <laughs> because I really get offended when people say, "Oh, the, the white, you know, stylists can't do black hair." That's so not true. So my thoughts is, yes, I don't need to go to a stylist because I do my own hair. If my hair was natural, I would still be going to a stylist. Do I need to go to a stylist? No. Um, but if I did go to a stylist, would it matter if that person was white or black? Well, I think that, again, piggybacking off uh, Markeisha and Shari, um, I also divorced my stylist when I went natural. A lot of styles you can accomplish on your own. You don't need it. Um, I've been chopped. And uh, for my TWA, just the moisturizing, conditioner, wetting, and keep going. Um, but as my hair started to grow, I did go and get my ends clipped. Um, I think I would frequent a stylist if they were educated on how to take care of natural hair. Um, so far as a white stylist, I have been to several. 
uh, for haircuts and colors and it was awesome to say the least. I think that a lot of stylists should be diverse in different textures and cultures when it comes to hair because that's how the world is, especially in America. We are a huge melting pot. So I think that it is important for you not to just study one specific culture. You should know all types of hair, all textures of hair. I thought this was a great, 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 great topic um, with them closing. Maybe this is something that um, cosmetology schools can start looking at, um, how to take care of natural hair. That's where I, that's where I stand. Christmas is only a few days away, but if you haven't found the perfect gift for the naturalista in your life, here's some last minute gift ideas. One of the newest creations on the market is the Tangle Teaser. A lot of people are raving about this miracle hairbrush. It supposedly eliminates your tangle with ease. I've seen a lot of reviews on YouTube about it. People who has the, the curliest or the kinkiest hair use it and it's just ease away their tangles. The bristles are supposed to be really soft. And I've heard that this brush is like really expensive, but surprisingly enough, it's only $9.99. And you don't have to get this online. You can get it at any Sally's Beauty Supply. It might be the perfect gift for your curliest or kinkiest friend. Check it out. The natural beauty in your family. Why not get them a beautiful hair steamer for Christmas? It restores moisture and open up your cuticles to allow conditioners to penetrate your hair shaft. And it also reduces breakage and split ends caused by dry hair. Another great gift to give the naturals in your life they'll absolutely love you for is the Oyen Handmade Hairdo. Lightweight quenching lotion, great for second day hair, great for leave-ins, and it's great just for moisturizing your hair. I know I had a big problem when I first big chopped about moisture. So if you have naturals in your life that has some dry hair, check out the Oyen Handmade. The last great gift that you can get that natural person in your life is Mrs. Jessie's. They're having their annual buy one get one sale and it's from everything from curly meringue to curly pudding from their newest addition to their line, the Sweetback Treatment. And now it's time to feature the naturalistas of the day. Each week we're going to feature a natural woman who are doing something positive for the natural hair community online or in the city of Detroit. Today we're featuring the founders of Naturally Fly Natural Hair Detroit Meetup, sisters Jennifer and Etta Espy. I'm Jennifer and I'm Etta Fly SP on Facebook. Ooh, ooh. I started transitioning in 01 when I was in school because I just was tired of getting perms. I never liked the whole process of getting perms so I decided I was done, so I grew my perm out. I transitioned for about a year and a half. I cut off my um, relaxed ends, and then uh, I wore my hair out in the afro one time, and I was extremely uncomfortable with it. I didn't know what to do with it at the time, so um, I had it for the next five, six years. It was pulled back in a bun, straight. I hot combed it, I flat ironed it, and then for about a year and a half ago, I decided it was really hot that summer <laughs> and I decided I was like it's hot outside I'm sweating I just want to get in the shower and just run water like over my head and I was like I'm tired of this um, my hair was not as good as it used to be I thought so I got in the shower one night I put water in it and I went to sleep and the next morning I untwisted it and I've been doing that ever since pretty much started um, about 99, September of 99, I left to go to um, college, down Savannah College of Art and Design to study art and theater. And we grew up, my sister and I grew up in the church, it's very African centered, so we saw women forever rocking locks, braids, afros, twists, everything that was natural, and I didn't know you could do that. And so my mom told me, yeah, you can do that, you can do that. So I thought, okay, so those are where our roots kind of came from. So. Um, after going through high school and kind of experimenting with head wraps and kind of getting more centered in African culture and just trying to figure out like where I belong and where do I fit, um, 99 I went to school and I'm down south and I figured what that should be the best time to just start fresh and to start over and to start growing my perm out. So I started growing my perm out in 99. I didn't get another perm since then and that's been 11, I guess like 11 plus years now. And I went through like having 
the you know the weave braids and everything the long weave braids down because I wasn't too comfortable with the in between with the actual like the nappy part and then the real straight part on the end so I wasn't really feeling that right there and I went to Africa in 2001 for the World Conference Against Racism and it was there that I felt comfortable because I couldn't believe that there were so many women in Africa that had perms and press outs that just blew my mind I'm thinking I'm going to Africa I'd be like you know go back and get on the good train and just be over there and you know everybody embraced me with the afros and the locks and the braids and the twist and it was nothing there were signs for palms and relaxers and everything else and that blew me away so there i stood um outside my hotel room in the sand you know at the ocean or whatever and just took those braids out and i it was there that i felt more comfortable with myself and say, you know what, this is how it's going to be, just rock it. And as I just transition out of that, I would um, do a twist out or just twist my hair. And as the ends were straight, I was kind of cut. As I felt more comfortable, I was snip snip. Like, okay, I can cut this a little bit more. And so I felt more more comfortable to try more, more styles and to transition in and to all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much where that kind of starts. It starts and ends or starts and progresses a little bit. Sister is on these hair boards like crazy. She's on YouTube, she's on Naturality, Curly Nikki, <laughs> Nappy Nap Nap Stop Com. <laughs> One day, she was kind of like, you know, we should have a meetup at the shop. And I was like, for what? She's like, the natural hair. And I was like, oh, okay. So, I mean, we talked about it for like months before we actually picked the date and did it. And I just wanted to have a hair meetup because I started having my hair out, wearing it out, and I just wanted to get all this information that I could on natural hair. And on the hair boards, I noticed a lot of the other girls were, uh, they, so I wanted to have one here. Right. So we thought maybe we could get like a small group to come here. Like 20 or 30 people, we thought. Yeah. And small, we thinking, talk small hair. Small people come. We talk, we also like a circle like Kumbaya, yeah, sit in a little circle or whatever, <laughs> and just pass around some coffee and mm -hmm. just eat some desserts or whatever. So we finally planned a day. We was like, we'll go ahead and do this. And we didn't have any flyers, nothing. We just put it on Facebook. First it was word of mouth, just kind of telling people like, hey, come through, whatever. And then somebody was like, make a Facebook uh, event page. So I was like, all right, we'll make a Facebook page. Made an event page and then like almost immediately we had like 120 people like RSVP for this event. A chance to come together and just talk about hair, which is what black women are really focused on, hair. No matter if it's, if it's not with this big or this big, this big, they still want to talk about hair. I'm a big t-shirt lover. I love t-shirts, so I've always wanted to have my own t-shirt line. And when we came in with National by Detroit, we figured that I mean, you can't, you, you really don't see black women rocking a natural hairstyle on a t-shirt that's on any kind of person that's famous or anywhere else just rocking a t-shirt that looks like them. It's all something else. So I figured, why not collab and have a t-shirt that looks like me or that looks like something very close to me or that looks like my sister looks like you. It looks like Fly and the Naturally Fly t-shirt line falls up together. So I have a funky afro lady that's really dope and I have a lock lady that says as nature intended, which is sweet as well. And also we have a bald butterfly sister. So we kind of covered, you know, the afro lady, the bald, and the lock because our hair can go through several different transformations and, and transitions in our journey. So we want to just kind of cover all those kind of things and also give young girls an outlet too so they can say, this t-shirt right here looks just like me or I want my to look just like this or I want to have a bald haircut just like this. So it's kind of empowering that. It's giving you freedom. It's giving you liberation. It's giving you something funky to wear in the process of your natural hair. Hey you, yeah you, you out there. Did you just big chop, cut your hair recently and you're looking for, I don't know, someone to give you credit for what you did because everyone else is frowning upon it. Send that picture into us, a before and after, and we'll spotlight you and showcase you on our show. We would love to have you. Here's the first one. Check her out. Detroit native Tamara decided to cut all of her hair off on November 30th while doing a project called The Year of I've Never, where she did something she never did each month of this year. Let me just say, Tamara, you look amazing. I mean, with being natural or relaxed, either way, you are looking absolutely fierce, yes, my friend. Yes. So I just want to say, you look amazing. I'm sure you don't have any self esteem issues, but if you were worried about rocking that TWA, honey, don't worry anymore. No, not at all. Fabulous. Great. Tammy B, my girl, you look amazing. Had to put you in the spotlight. 
you look gorgeous with your new haircut. Um, it's a new way of life, new way of living. Welcome. Absolutely. I seen you walk in the door last Saturday and I was like, oh my gosh, look at her hair. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Well, have you ever seen somebody with an afro and it just made you say, well, damn. Hmm. This part of the show is going to feature someone that made us say just the same exact thing. It's called Aphrodisiac. And no, it's not talking about a sexual desire. It's just making us get excited. Like, wow, that is a fierce afro. How did you get it? And you know, we don't want to bombard people with questions when we see them on the street. But we're going to do that for you. So check Sanjanetta out. Last but not least, here's our hot link of the day. This website caught our eye this week and we had to share our findings with you ladies. Today's link is Bees, Race, and Beyond. Bees, Race, and Beyond caters to natural little girls. The website was designed to show mothers how to take care of little girls' natural hair. You'll find all kinds of hairstyles, from braids to bees to braid outs to twist outs, anything you can think of with natural hair for your daughter. Check it out at beesbraidsbeyond.com. Thank you guys so much for watching the first episode of Natural Beauties in the City. We're so excited about it, and I know you guys are too. If you have any comments, suggestions, ideas on shows, on some products to feature, anything of that nature, please send them to naturalbitc at gmail.com. Also, if you guys want to be showcased in the TWA Spotlight feature, make sure you send your pictures as well. Thank you for our first episode. Please rate, subscribe, and send comments. This is for you. We vibe off of you. This is for our viewers. This is not for ourselves. We see each other all day. I can look in the mirror and see myself. It's for you. It's for you. Tell us what you want to see. Help us out. We'll make sure it happens. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching. So glad to be here with these wonderful ladies to my side. <laughs> and stay tuned. We promise we have wonderful things coming for you. All right, thank you guys so much for watching again. Thank you. Yeah, bye. bye.